Have you ever really thought about how people overcome evil with good? Blessed are the pure in heart because they will see God. And I'm not talking about me mentally ascending to a fantasy, but like really be pure in heart. There's a way to find God's mercy and become pure in heart. If life was like if life was like a sport and we got to pick which team we wanted to play on and our own personal coach, why would we pick the one that will coach us to bear grudges, be a murmuring, complaining, fault-finding, bitter, critical person that always loses the Super Bowl? We wouldn't really want to pick that coach, would we? You wouldn't want to pick the coach that teaches you how you'd want to pick the coach that teaches you how to be kind, tenderhearted, forgiving, right? The one who would help you to understand the errors of your way and help you help the other players to get better, right? The one who would give you a shining countenance, not the one who feeds players each other to, to snack on. Who wants to be the sick, weak, and lethargic team that has the faith to be losers? We don't have to live suspicious of the Lord and others when we face our own character problems. We don't have to listen to the slander, eat his words in the spirit of our mind. How sad the father of creation must have been to watch his beloved children turn into accusers and excusers. Instead of listening to the voice of love, they ate the words of the suspicious father against him. And he tried to get Jesus to do the same thing, to take Jesus out of the kingdom of love and into the kingdom of vanity and emptiness, chasing the winds of happiness like Cain did. Any good father doesn't want children who look down on each other and, is, and they're merciless. He wants us to understand our need for mercy ourselves so we can be merciful in our judgment. We weren't created to live in depression, hopelessness, feigning adversity when life doesn't happen our way. I did a whole article on that feigning in our minds. Other people have published it too. The Bible's really just a book about people, real time, real stories, and real situations. A few of those people cared about their creator and did well. Some that didn't do well changed their minds about why they did wrong. When we hear God's voice and obey it, we will want to know what to do in our trials. He'll help us. We can't learn our way out of our problems either. We can be personal with our creator and hear and do. Even when we do what's wrong, there's help. We weren't ever made to accuse and excuse ourselves and accuse and excuse others. Hear from the voice of the slander and be part of the takedown. We were called to build each other up in our most holy faith. We were called to live reconciled to God's voice and when we blow it, to get back up because God's greater than our condemnation. So we can stay teachable because the Holy Spirit's a teacher. And when you get that, you'll highly value the love of the truth. Any father would want a child to love them and love the other children, right? To be honest, open, forgiving, understanding with the whole family. And when they do what they know they shouldn't do, that father wants them to own it and learn from it and don't waste the loss like professional sports wouldn't. Anybody in, a, in the uh, sports world learns from their mistakes, right? So hiding prideful children aren't teachable. God didn't create us to live our life alienated, hiding behind bushes. We don't want children with imaginary lip service love, right? We want children who live in real time and in real situations are able to overcome evil with good, to help each other, not with condemnation, but with judgment to save each other and talk story about their own mistakes to be forgiving. Um, the Bible says that God abides with those that love their brother. Think about that. You don't want your children to look down on and despise each other and reject each other, do you? You want your children who understand their own mistakes to help other ch the other children with their mistakes and be merciful in their judgments. A father with a child like Cain, who murders, looks down on us, is in the same category. They don't want 
children that are alienated from them and everybody else, you know, the good father doesn't have any delight in that, right? Abel looked to help his brother and do the right thing and care about what the father wanted. This is what a healthy family looks like, where our father, who wants us and his family, whose name is holy, to help us be holy with each other. When I die, I really want people to know that I've lived a life trying to reconcile others to the Father and to each other. You know, Jesus is in the business of saving and keeping souls, so we should be in that same business too. Uh, that's a life well spent. It's more valuable and precious than anything on the earth that we could actually go for. Um, we get purified. We find a treasure of gold when we understand the trial. When we're off in Lustville, all the selfish vices that make us wander out of the way of understanding, we can't show up in the right game with the right father and be who God created us to be. You know, what, what father is really happy with a lazy kid that stays in bed all day? You know, not real blessing to anybody in the family. We find God's mercy when we stay merciful with others. When we try to see the twig in the eye of the loved by the father child, by digging deep to remember the log in our own eye, we're blessed by the father. Blessed are the merciful, they shall obtain mercy. Hopelessness and depression, fainting and fretting, come from playing on the wrong stage of life with the wrong director in the play, acting out the wrong role. We aren't called to play the part of Cain in the movie of our life. Being our siblings keepers and not slayer is why the father loves us and wants to help us. It's not easy at all to judge to condemn other people. It's a brutal life. Life is extremely difficult when you behold the logs in the eyes of others because we're called to take the twig out of the eyes of others. It's very hard and a very cursed life when we ignore the logs in our own eyes. We don't see clearly. It's very difficult to pretend like you don't judge when you're condemning others for judging when they are telling the truth to save you. It's very hard to live life feeling sorry for yourself, demanding others to be perfect and faultless the way you want them to love you. We're called to be free, free to love, because we don't even really care how others love us anymore. We're blessed because we care now about how we love others instead. So, the voice of the Lord never stops talking to those children. That's what's really cool, because that becomes our passion, the passion of Jesus. The zeal for his house has constrained us. So when I met Jean and I had a bunch of women all of a sudden in my life, uh, I was either going to be an extended arm of Jesus's mercy to them in my judgments or look down on them in my judgments because <laughs> we all make judgments, even the people that say they don't. So we obtain God's favor by how we love his children, his daughters, or disfavor by how we don't. So just like in real life with real parents, with real children, when they love each other, the parents are happy, right? So by digging deep into my own soul and understanding my own sin, I was able to stay thankful and holy in trials. We plug into the father of love, not the father of selfish lusts of all kinds. We end up doing well. The father of love, not the father of death, the vices of selfish soul, the soul that's on the run. Conflict in the life of a single child doesn't make that child change very much. Conflict in a family of a bunch of kids learning to do well and seeing the beauty of conflict to teach us how to love creates very blessed children. If the only way for us to really overcome Satan actually is by the blood of being forgiven, the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the Father, if, if the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one, it's actually the Father that came to earth and shed blood. 
you know, if it's the three in one, it's a mystery. I can't tell you that I get it all myself, but Jesus is the face and the voice of the Father. So if we overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, it's important to not love pride and lying and hiding. The coach of darkness will be happy to help us destroy all of our relationships and make us wandering loner vagabonds. And there's a lot of people like that that go to church every Sunday, sadly. Poor, because we're poor in love. Plugging into the voice of the right father who will teach us to judge ourselves so we don't have to be judged is really where it's at. This makes us healthy and our countenance to shine. And then we can reflect the good father whose voice we value, right? We're all a reflection of the father we love. So we get purified and we find a treasure chest of gold when we get out of lustville and selfish vices. We find God's mercy when we stay merciful with others. We try to see the twig in the eye of others loved by the father, those children, by digging deep to remember the log in our own eye. Um, I hope I'm not repeating this. Please forgive me if I am. It won't be very much longer. Maybe we need to hear it again. But <laughs> We find God's mercy when we stay merciful with others. When we try and see the twig in the eyes of others because we dig deep to remember the log in our own. I'm going to actually move on because I think I was already there before. So we all have done things in Proverbs 6, the things that the Father hates, right? We all like sheep have gone astray and done our own thing our own way and suffered for it. So why not go for the blessing and help others go for the blessing because we can tell people how we counted the cost and tell them about the curses in our life from obey, being the voice of the stranger. Why not live forgiven so we can be merciful and tell the truth to others to help them? Blessed are the pure in heart, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. They're the ones that see God. What if conflict in relationships is the antidote to our sin to see clearly and to actually become pure in heart. You know why people are hopeless and depressed and fret? Because of what they allow themselves to think about other people, say to other people, and do to, to, to other people. It curses our life when we're doing the wrong thing. So there's no prize to be won, but darkness when we don't love the right father and love his children and listen to, to his voice instead of listening to the killer, killer, stealer, and destroyer of love. Malachi 3 calls this God's refining fire and his fuller soap. It talks about it all other places too. Smart people, wise people, go for the refinement. They go for the soap. There's a movie about that too called My Fair Lady. It's a good depiction of the work of the Father, the operation of God to take us from one dimension into another. Jesus said, let the blind lead the blind into the ditch. Leave them alone. They're fine, tapped into the voice of the stranger. They'll open the door to their soul when they see the value of giving up rebellion against understanding their own soul. When people give up being, <laughs> being uh, uh, not giving a rip <laughs> for tapping into the right voice, they'll see the value in their eye being single so their body will get full of light. People that don't see the gold in being their brother's keeper need to wander. Finding real gold can only be done successfully when we care about understanding our own soul. I think this is what most rebellion is about anyway, in the heart of those choosing the death walk prize, you know, not knowing what they're doing, however, not wanting to per, not wanting to, really understand, and they prefer to accuse others and excuse themselves. So some people really value being the blind and the blind leading each other down the ditch of darkness. So I don't think most people that do it even understand that they're doing it though because they're too busy flattering themselves in their own conceit. So when we prefer to accuse others and excuse ourselves, uh, we'll win a prize, but it won't be the right one. So words actually 
in our mind, that come out of our mouth, that are the meditation of our heart, become what we think and say and do to other people. So we're either shoving people into the desert that Jesus escaped from with right words, or I mean shoving them in with wrong words, or helping them out of that desert with right words. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God don't get the perilous path they're on. They are du duped into thinking the obligation to be their brother's keeper is a curse, when in all reality, it's the blessed life. Until they really want to abide it with the Holy Father, the voice of the stranger will give them what they want. Sadly, people have to eat the fruit of their own ways and get filled with their own devices, chasing the winds of vanity to have value for hearing the voice of love and mercy so they can have real love and mercy, not counterfeit. Flattery and love are as different as darkness and light. And when we want the kingdom of love over the many kinds of selfish pleasures and lusts at the expense of love, and when we see the cost to others, we actually become willing. You know, like the scripture says, my people are willing in the day of my power. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness because those are the ones that have ears to hear. It also shows you why people have their minds set on, earth, set on earthly things. Their God is their belly. They glory in what they should be ashamed of. Why? Because they don't care who they are to other people, really. They're fine being flatterers. So they get drunk on the cup of the world. It's the only other option. It's what, it's what Cain actually did. It's what Abel actually did. Different. It's common all through the Bible. It's up to us to pick the right stage of life to live on. Our own glory versus the glory of God the Father. Man's glory versus the glory of God the Father. So Jesus is in the saving and keeping of souls. Ours and someone else's in our life. The, all the someone else's. <laughs> if we don't see the emptiness of flattery, we won't value the love of the Father. We think so little of checking off God's voice in our conscience. No biggie, right? Well, Gene was talking about Nuremberg, the Nuremberg trials. You know, there's a movie about that. And all these German officers actually had no clue of what was happening in the bigger picture. Most Germans didn't either. Of the tiny little part they played in the greater horror of what the devil was actually up to. It was almost more than any of them could bear when they had to watch it on a film. So he explained our little acts of obedience to his still small voice, like putting a tiny finger, our tiny little finger, in a hole in a dam. Rebellion is just the opposite. It's like putting a tiny little hole in a huge dam. Both have huge, long-lasting results for good or evil. So I had a person named Michael in my past who the Justice Department called the Ted Bundy of Colorado. And he committed some pretty horrible crimes. And you know why I could be merciful to him? Because I looked at my own unfaithfulness to the King of Glory myself. Jesus had been like a woman scorned, bruised, despised, rejected of men. That's why we won't faint in life if we keep our eyes fixed on him instead of how others are loving us and get our eyes off how we've been scorned, bruised, and despised and rejected by other people and realize that we did the same thing to Jesus Christ. We won't be sad anymore, right? 38 years ago, I met a child molester too. I had a deep bruise and wound and sore in my soul too because of being held at gunpoint as an eight-year-old terrorized, running for my life from him. It was emotionally devastating. I was so troubled my whole life really until I found Jesus. This man had confessed. I didn't know that. And he'd actually gone to jail. How could I ever forgive him though? Based on what happened to me. Again, by seeing my own going astray to get my own needs met my own way. I too had become unfaithful and really we molest, we become child molesters with the darkness that we don't fight. It gets to molest other people, right? So blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those that mourn, they'll be comforted. Blessed are the meek, they'll shall, they shall inherit the earth. 
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. They'll be satisfied and filled. Blessed are the pure in heart. They'll see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. They'll be called the children of God. Blessed are those which are persecuted for righteousness sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Want to be the child of the most high? Bless those that curse you. Feel bad for them. Look down. Don't look down on them who hate, who look down on other people. Don't look down on them that persecute you and reject you. Pray for those people who curse you. And maybe when you really get it, you actually can. You can rejoice when you're, I always wondered how you could do that. Now I know, you know, how do you rejoice when people persecute you, speak evil of you and despise you and speak all manner of evil? Rejoice and, you know, dance, sing, <laughs> for great is your reward in heaven. Man, I always wondered how that could happen. I actually understand it at this point in my life. So when we do well under oppression of people that are in the dark with the wrong father, who are made in the Im image of God too, this is what pleases God. Do we want children that play the part of Cain in each other's lives or the part of Abel? We should do and be who we want our children to do, who we want them to be. How much more can love do, Jesus do, than give his very life that we might live? People needed to murder him to even understand how dark and cursed their life was. People need to persecute and hate and despise those trying to love him and help him because they may never see the darkness for what it is until they do it, sadly. And it's really in the suffering of others and taking it patiently that has the potentials, potential to help other people see. Maybe at some point in their life when they get sick of making excuses and accusing people, they'll want to hear God's voice in, instead and understand their own demise and help others understand their demise. That's why you're reading this. My path and the path of many who hungered and thirsted for the right thing, the right father, instead of never being full of all the selfish pleasures that life has that actually end up destroying relationships and keep people on the run from each other. Sometimes even people when they're actually married, they say they're married and they have a license and everything, but they're strangers to each other. Is anybody in your life worth giving up the life of the stranger father for? Is anyone worth giving up pride and lying and hiding for? Michael was a person in my past who the Justice Department called the Ted Bundy of Colorado. He committed horrible crimes. So how did I become merciful? I looked at my own unfaithfulness to the King of Glory. Jesus had also been like a woman scorned, so. Uh, this is the same thing that printed out here, so. Sorry about the little glitches here. I hope you get the message, so. Because hiding is a strategy for the stranger father who kills, steals, and destroys relationships. Jesus, the father of light, the holy teacher, came and he created us to hide under the shadow of his wings, to get out of looking down on the ones he sends us to, to gather us under his wings, to keep us, gosh, Psalm 91 is so powerful too, to keep us from walking down the road of desolation. And when you say to the least, Blessed are these other parts of the body, Jesus himself, who put them into my life. I'll see his salvation if I say blessed at least are those who come into my life. And maybe it's everybody that's ever been in our life. Everyone had a divine purpose for us seeing God's salvation and being blessed. Even the most difficult, lost, dark ones to help us love the Father of Light and His children, to take us into an eternal destiny with the Father of love and mercy forever and ever. Amen.